I'm Steve Fryer. And I'm Lauren Rankin. In this program, we're going to show you the wide variety of exercise equipment the Sharper Image carries and how each piece is unique. We also want to point out how the equipment can be used successfully to build a healthier body. The more informed you are about the equipment and how it can help the customer improve his overall fitness or golf or tennis game, the more effective you'll be able to sell the products. Now Lauren's going to show you a product that will allow you to track your target heart rate, one of the more important elements in the success of a workout. In addition to consulting your doctor before any exercise program, one thing you're going to want to do is monitor your exercise workout so that you're getting some benefit to your body without working too hard or overexerting yourself. How do you do that? The key is getting your heart rate expressed in beats per minute up into a training zone based on your age and keeping it there for the duration of your workout. So you need to figure out what your target zone is. Get your beats per minute up to that level and monitor it so you don't work too hard. The answer is this product, the Wrist Coach 2 Pulse Monitor. You'll find that this is an excellent product that you can sell to a company just about all the equipment that we carry. And not only that, the customer can use it outside the home, biking or running or just about anything. The Pulse Monitor has two parts. The first part is the strap around my chest. It snaps on here, it's a real comfortable band, and it has this transmitter which sends signals to the wrist. Now this has a number of different functions. The best part about this is it's cordless. You don't get caught up or tangled in any of the cords. It's great. By using some easy formulas, you can get the numbers you need to program your pulse monitor. The first thing you need to do is find out what your maximum heart rate is. Subtract your age from 220. So let's say you're 30. Your maximum heart rate is 190. Now you want to find your target training heart rate. Multiply your maximum heart rate by 0.6 and by 0.85. This gives you 116 and 161 beats per minute. By keeping your heart rate between these two numbers during your workout, you will be able to improve your cardiovascular fitness safely. So let's say I'm at home and I've already programmed in my high and low numbers. So I start pedaling. And now I'm going to deliberately pedal too fast. My heart rate will get above its high target level. So let's see what happens. The watch is beeping. It's telling me I'm going too fast. So I'm going to slow down. The watch is beeping again. It's telling me I'm going too slow. So I speed up to get back into my target range. Using the pulse monitor keeps your workout both beneficial and safe. People often ask, what's the one piece of equipment that I can purchase that will embrace all the elements of fitness? And I always tell them, it's the rower. This is the new rower from Precore, the 625EX. Its one major modification is that it will take someone as tall as six foot four inches. The heart of the rower's resistive system are the cylinders. Precore designs and builds its cylinders with a double wall for insulation. Also fills them with a silicon-based material that dissipates heat while you're working out. So there is no loss of resistance through the range of motion. Attention to detail is one of Precore's strongest assets. They install Velcro foot locks, easy in, easy out. Keeps the foot isolated, allows you more power through the range of motion. The pivoting foot pod that Precore has installed in all its rowers allows for a much greater range of motion. This allows you much better results in your workout. Precore has installed some fairly sophisticated tracking devices on the new rower. This particular monitor will allow you to track time, strokes per minute, strokes, total strokes, average and cumulative, and also scan through the three primary features, time, strokes per minute, and strokes. What this allows you to do is to stay on pace, to stay tracking, and to give you an idea of feedback and what kind of progress you're making. To increase or decrease the resistance on the pre-core roar, you simply adjust the pressure plate on the side and slide it up or down. It's bracketed and coded for numbers to indicate resistance outputs. Very simple to change. 
Back support and comfort are two integral components to a successful workout. Precor has been very conscientious about designing this seat. They've angled and raked it to give you low back protection and also grooved it to allow air circulation to pass through the seat while you're rowing. Seat assembly glides easily on four precision balance neoprene wheels, designed to give you years of comfort and ease in your workout. Another innovative feature in the new Precore rower is this spring-loaded side mount for your stereo or personal Walkman. Working out basically is boring. This music system will really keep you motivated while you're working out, and because of that, you get much better results. The rack system moves with you while you row, keeping the wires free and untangled. So you got a system that'll give you a good aerobic workout and a good upper body workout as well. What are you gonna do with it when you're through? Precourse thought of that as well. It slides into itself and it's made to stand on its side. It takes up about the same amount of room that a ironing board does and it weighs but 42 pounds. This is the Nautilus abdominal and lower back machine. What's so unique about this machine is it works your entire midsection. It works both your abdominal muscles and your lower back muscles. It's one of the few machines that will do that. So let me show you how it works. We're set up for the abdominal muscles, so let's start with those. You get onto the adjustable seat and you place your shoulders behind the pads. Now your automatic reaction is to grab the bar with your hands, but you don't want to do that. By pushing with your upper chest only, you begin to isolate and work the abdominal muscles. This does a much better job than, say, doing sit-ups, because when you're doing sit-ups and your abdominal muscles get tired, your stronger leg muscles step in and overcompensate for them. Now with this machine, your abdominal muscles get a much better workout in a shorter period of time because they're isolated effectively. The resistance on the abdominal and lower back machine is fully adjustable. Let me show you how it works. The machine has a steel bar where you slide on the weights. As you get better and better, you add more weights. Secure them down with a steel pin. It takes up to 99 pounds. The customer does have to pay extra for the weights. Now that you've worked the abdominal muscles, it's time to work the back. You can get up and turn the seat around. Go ahead and place your feet into the foot pod and strap yourself into the seat. The straps give you added support and safety. The fact that we're working both sets of muscles evenly over time means we're building full, well-balanced muscles without the fear of injury. Naturally, as you build proficiency, your posture and bearing improve, and your stomach fat gives way to attractive, firm ridges. Inside Nautilus equipment is a specially shaped cam. It looks like a Nautilus shell. We've taken the cover off here so you can see how it works. What this does is it varies the amount of resistance during a repetition to challenge a muscle at every point of its contraction. As you've probably already noticed, this machine is extremely well made and rugged. The frame is heavy duty tubular steel. High density foam cushions all the contact surfaces. The internal parts are silent and never need maintenance. The chain housing is sturdy ABS plastic. This machine does require about 15 minutes of assembly, and the wrench you need is included with the unit. Perhaps the biggest barrier to keeping up a fitness program on a home exercise machine is maintaining motivation. Precor has designed this unit, the Electronic Fitness Cycle 8.7 SP, to give you both tremendous motivation and variety in the course of your workout. Now the first thing you notice when you jump on board is this screen, located directly in front of you near the handlebars. I'll push the start button to begin. Right away, a menu of information appears. The screen allows you to access any information you might need in order to use the machine. From this menu, I'll select courses. Now I get a choice of various courses. I can pick moderate, and the names of several moderate courses appear. I can scan down these and select the Painted Desert, for example. Different landscapes will appear on the screen to match the route that I've chosen. I press the OK button and a rider representing me moves up to the start line. Down at the bottom you can see an elevation profile of the route that I've selected. 
You can compete up to against seven pace riders. These riders maintain the speed that you preset for them, so you're constantly challenged. I want a pace rider, so I press yes, and the machine asks me what speed I want the rider to move at. By pressing this button, I lower the pace rider's speed down from 15 to 9 miles per hour. I press OK, and the pace rider appears and rides up to the start line. If I wanted to race against more riders, I would continue programming each one's speed into the machine. But I don't, so I press no. And the screen tells me to start pedaling. And press start to begin riding. On the right hand side, you and your pace rider are shown in an overhead view, while at the bottom center, you're shown in profile. Now as I start pedaling, you can see the pace rider gets a lead on me right away. Also, you can see the screen switch to a view of the road that you would see from the seat of a bicycle. Road signs and telephone poles pass as I shift into a higher gear to try and gain on the pace rider. Now, as I pick up speed, I can close in on them. As I get closer and closer, the pace rider appears and grows larger. Picking up speed, I pass the pace rider and move on. Down below in the profile view, I can see that I'm putting some distance between myself and the pace rider, while at the same time, the incline or grade that I have to cycle on steepens, making the going tougher. The computer signals the particle brake to increase resistance, which simulates the hills in the course. I'm gonna downshift to maintain my lead. To the right of the view screen, information critical to your workout is displayed. Here we see elapsed time into the workout, the current speed, the pedal revolutions per minute, the total number of miles ridden up to this point, the gear I am currently in, and the amount of calories per minute I am burning. It even tells you how many calories you have burned so far. To the left of the screen is displayed the name of the course selection, the length of the course, the course record, and the current gradient. It also gives you information on the rider status of you and the other pace riders. When you're done with your workout, the bike records your performance. Now the most unusual thing about this machine is that you can program a pace rider to duplicate your performance so that the next time you work out, you can race against yourself. By giving you so many riders to race against and 30 different pre-programmed courses, this pre-core bike keeps you motivated. You're continually challenged by the other riders and the terrain. The hand grips are covered with non-slip neoprene. The pedals are equipped with foot straps that allow you to work muscles on the downstroke and the upstroke. In addition to the computer and screen, this pre-core bike has a number of other quality features. In the base is a 25-pound flywheel that is mounted horizontally. Each revolution turns the flywheel at a 7 to 1 ratio, nearly twice as fast as chain-driven cycles. The seat is fully adjustable to provide you and other riders with a perfect fit. It's also padded. Although the bike is heavy, just tilt it forward and it's easy to roll around. It's powered by house current. I'm standing next to the Life Cycle 6000 series from Bally Fitness Products. We've carried this Life Cycle for about five years now and have enjoyed tremendous success with it in our stores. What makes it so very easy to sell is that most consumers have seen this in health clubs, which gives it a tremendous amount of credibility. What Bally did when they acquired Life Cycle is they made two major modifications. First, they dropped about $1,000 off the asking price. It certainly makes that more affordable. And they took a lot of weight out of the unit. So now a consumer can use this at home a lot easier than they could if it was in the spa. Very easy to move, lightweight. Let me show you some of the internal external components of the Life Cycle and how they're constructed. All the internal components of the Life Cycle 6000 series are protected by a tough outer shell of ABS plastics. The frame itself is solid tubular steel, and Bally has installed these comfortable neoprene hand grips. You supply all the power to operate this bicycle. We'll discuss how that works in a few minutes, but let's take a closer look at this grid panel. The Life Cycle has hundreds of different programs. Let's look at just one of them. Let's say you want to ride for 24 minutes. 
you access that time on the computer board. Then you have 12 resistance levels you can access. Obviously, the higher the number, the more resistance the bike creates. Let's go with level six. On the left-hand side are your RPM ratios. The bike is set up on an 80 RPM cycle ratio, so you must maintain at least 80 RPMs to follow this fixed program. In the upper left-hand corner are the calories you'll expend in an hour. This, of course, will change as your hill profiles change. Here's your workout time in the center. Now, the bike warms you up for three or four minutes, takes you through a fitness test evaluation. I'll show you how that works in a minute. And then the main component of the workout is the interval training. The cycle will actually create hills and valleys for you, demanding greater and lesser amounts of energy output. And then the final aspect is the cool down. So you get a complete aerobic workout, warm up, test pattern, interval training, and cool down. All in all, an incredible aerobic workout. As I said before, you supply the energy to power this bicycle. Let's take a look at how that works. A heavy-duty alternator connected to the flywheel charges a 9-volt battery that shapes and creates varying degrees of difficulty as you ride on this life cycle. The seat assembly is fully adjustable and very easy to use. Let's take a look at how it works. Put out this black stop knob and adjust the seat height so your leg will not hyperextend and lock out at the knee. And then simply slip it back in. For your riding comfort, Bally has added extra foam padding, so it's very comfortable. The push-up is long been recognized as the single best way to improve upper body strength. With that in mind, Precor has designed the new 220 push-up stand. What's so incredible about it is I can go from a wide position push-up to strengthen the pectoralis muscle groups of the chest, shoulders, and back, and do the standard push-up. Now, without making any modifications, I can go right into a tricep dip. Most conventional push-up stands require you to break down the middle assembly, which takes time and is a real hassle. Precore eliminates that one problem. Three things that make the Precore 220 push-up stand unique. One, all aluminum construction. Two, extra padding on the neoprene grips. And three, most importantly, non-skid rubber pads on the surface. Not only can you do the narrow and wide grip push-ups with shoulders, back, biceps, and triceps, but you can also do some excellent hamstring stretches. You can do some abductor exercises for the outer thigh, and you can work the gluteal and back of the leg. Excellent. There are about 25 different exercises you can perform with the new 220 pre-core push-up stance. And many people prefer to play racquetball, tennis, or squash, or even golf. Let's say your game is tennis. Vital muscle groups often overlooked in the game are the flexor and extensor muscles found in the forearm and wrist. Muscles that until recently couldn't be isolated except through dumbbells and barbell work. Well now Marcy comes out with a new device called the Marcy Pro Wedge. Let's take a closer look at it. The two muscle groups that the Marcy Wedge effectively isolates are the forearm flexor and wrist extensor. The resistance on the Marcy Pro Wedge system is variable and can be controlled by either twisting this knob to the left or the right. They've given you brackets to indicate maximum and minimum resistive points. The grip is adjustable and can fit anyone's hand. Marcy has installed padded neoprene grips for comfort and ease through the range of motion. The flat black baked on enamel surface is an exclusive of the sharper image. One of the more important reasons why the Marcy Wedge has been so successful here at the Sharper Image over the last several years is because it's very lightweight, can be taken anywhere. You can use it in the office, at home, or actually on the court to strengthen wrist and forearm muscles. The Precor 718E stair climber is literally a non-impact aerobic machine. With a high incidence of injuries due to either long distance running or aerobics, a lot of machines are being developed today to minimize the shock of running and jumping in place. To climb aboard the uh, stair climber, you simply put your foot on the down pedal, step up on the up one and grip the padded hand grips. Now, several different ways you can approach this. Short little staccato movements like this are fine, or full range of motion, which is a little bit more effective. If there is a knee injury, for instance, you want to limit the range of motion. Now, by adjusting my position on the unit, I can work various muscle groups. For instance, if my body weight is off the unit, I'm going to work a lot more of the calf. If I direct all my weight to the center of the machine and drop my center of balance a little lower, I'm going to engage the front part of the quadricep and a lot of hamstring, and the gluteal muscles are being worked. 
If I simply make an adjustment like turning my feet in or out, I'm going to be working the ab and adductors, the inner outer thigh. All of the pre-core systems have standard tracking features on them. Usually they use a magnetic relay to pick up the impulses as you stride through the workout. The mode selector allows you to go to whatever feature you want, distance, time, strokes per minute, etc. The best thing to do is to put it on time, start the unit, and then go to the scan mode. So it'll go through the three primary features that are of interest, time, strokes per minute, and total strokes. The product weighs 65 pounds, and although it doesn't come with any wheels, it's very simple to slide the unit across the floor to another location. Like the Precore rower, they also use the same cylinder setup on the stair climber. It's double insulated, so it won't overheat when you're working out, and they use a silicon-based material to also fight the heat. Now, to affect the resistance on the stair climber, you simply change the attitude on the arms, the fulcrum, and it's increasingly more hard at this, at this level than it is at, at this attitude. Also, the repelling line can be changed to increase or decrease the range of motion on the machine, which is very interesting. If you have a client that has some damage to the knee and you want a limited range of motion, I can get this machine to go within a two or three inch movement. Or if you want a full workout, you can change it so you get a full range of motion on it. This is the final piece of equipment we're carrying by Precore. It's the 905E treadmill. Unlike the large bulky spa models and the one that preceded this one, very compact and will go into a limited space. Precore has made this panel very easy to read. Your speed indicator is marked here in green, and that'll increase the uh, acceleration of the unit. And the deceleration is marked in yellow. Stop, obviously, is in red, is in big bracket letters there. And the scan feature will allow you to go from time, speed, distance to incline point just by adjusting it through those range of indicators. Time, distance, speed, and incline. Now, the Precore 905E has the ability to go from 0.3 tenths of a mile per hour to six miles per hour. You can change the speed while you're on the unit by pressing one of the two speed indicators. They're both bracketed with arrows up and down indicating that direction. I can also change the grade. It goes from zero to 10%. So although six miles an hour is not particularly fast, at 10%, it's a serious workout. So someone that's trying to do Cardio rehab work on this can do it because it goes very slow. And like most treadmills that start at two and a half miles an hour, this will start tracking at three tenths of a mile per hour. And it would take a very uh, strong runner six miles an hour at 10% grade. Let me show you how the pre course safety clip works. Should you be going too fast and lose balance on this thing, the unit will allow you to slip off and disconnect the speed indicator. Now, a common problem with most treadmills is that they, as you accelerate through the speed settings, they skip or surge. Precore has installed photo-optic equipment in the floorboards that actually read your foot plant and stride variance. So what it's doing is making up to 30 adjustments a second on the rollers. So they've eliminated, completely eliminated, the surging and skipping process that's common to less expensive treadmills. The unit will accelerate in one-tenth of a mile increments all the way up to six miles an hour and will increase to a percentage grade of 10 percent. Now, I don't know the exact math, but I know that as you increase the speed and increase the elevation, although you're only going six miles an hour, your workload is equivalent to running almost a sub seven minute mile. Very quiet, very stable, and pre is installed safety railings, should there be a problem there, but you can let go and run the way you normally would. Well, that about wraps up this program. Make sure to take a close look at the instruction booklets on all the exercise equipment. There's more information there than we could possibly cover in a show like this. Good luck, and we'll be back with more updates on all the new equipment in the coming months. Hi, I'm Lou Susie, and welcome to the Sharper Image Gemstone Collection. Although we take tremendous pride in our high-tech products, we've also made a name for ourselves by selling quality gemstones to our customers. The purpose of this video is to provide product information and selling tips that will assist you in maximizing your gemstone sales.
The Sharper Image offers an outstanding collection of colored stones. We do not sell gemstones for investment purposes, but for collectors and those who appreciate fine jewelry. We've decided to focus on the largely untapped market for colored stones instead of diamonds and gold to differentiate us from other specialty retailers. Because each colored stone is unique, we are providing our customers an opportunity to purchase a product that is one of a kind. Product knowledge and professionalism are critical when you sell colored stones. Each type of stone has a unique history, which is often as important to the customer as the stone itself. Before a gem goes on display in a jewelry store showcase, it may pass through several countries in a half dozen hands, dealers, distributors, wholesalers, and importers, who each take a profit on the stone. But the sharper image operates more efficiently. Our gemstone buyers travel 40,000 miles a year to the world's gemstone centers, Brazil, Nairobi, Tel Aviv, Bangkok, and Hong Kong. They buy up to 10,000 carats at a time, directly from the mines. Buying in large quantities and cutting out the middleman gives us tremendous leverage on price and allows us to be very selective about the quality of stones which we will accept. Our buying power allows us to offer stones for much less than a typical jewelry store is forced to charge. Our buyers purchase loose stones which are already cut and polished. 75% of our jewelry pieces are meticulously handcrafted in our own shop in Little Rock. This allows us to keep overhead low and have greater control over the quality of finished pieces. The source of our gemstone and jewelry is Tallheimer Incorporated in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hi, I'm Alan Tallheimer. I founded the gemstone division of Sharper Image in 1981. We've been expanding rapidly ever since from our first offering of a six stone set eight years ago to today's wide selection of jewelry and gemstones. Many customers are unfamiliar with colored stones. Your depth of product knowledge helps to differentiate you and the sharper image from competitors. Commit yourself to learning about gemstones so customers will feel confident buying from you. Start with the basics. Learn and use proper gemstone terminology, but don't try to overwhelm your customer with too much jargon. Study the gemstone catalog and familiarize yourself with our products. Make sure that you always know the current and next month's birthstones so you can suggest gift items. In addition to the gemstone catalog, the information binder at the gemstone counter and gems by Joel Aram can help you expand your knowledge. If you can't find the answer to a question or if you need more information, consult your management team or call your gem representative in Little Rock. Product knowledge is essential, but it's not enough to close the gemstone sale. You must be able to build rapport and communicate your knowledge in a way that makes your customer want to know more. Take the same assertive selling posture with gemstones as you do with other products. Our gems and jewelry are beautifully arranged in glass cases to attract maximum attention. When a customer shows interest, don't assume that he is just browsing. Notice how she lets him get a closer look right away. Encourage interaction with the gem to overcome any initial hesitance. By interaction, we mean let the customer touch the product. Use props such as a polishing cloth and a jewelry pad to stimulate interest and show gems to their best advantage. Polish the stone with a soft cloth before showing it to remove any smudges and build anticipation. Do not use tweezers or a jeweler's loop unless the customer requests it. Tweezers, for example, are difficult to use, and should you fumble with them, the customer may lose confidence in your professionalism. Every stone is a precious stone. When the customer sees your reverence for the stone, he will appreciate its value. Move the stone underneath a lamp if possible to highlight its brilliance and beauty. Stones look better when held next to the skin. Unclasp necklaces and bracelets so the customer can try them on. Place a ring on the finger you think it will slip onto most easily. Hygiene laws prohibit customers from trying on pierced earrings. Holding earrings up to the ears is a good alternative. Position the mirror so that the customer can see the jewelry against their skin. If the stone is small, use prong tweezers so the customer can imagine how the stone will look in a setting. The personal touch of this technique makes it an extremely effective way to build rapport and get the customer involved with the stone.
When a customer tries jewelry on, it seems more attainable and the customer feels that the stone is already a part of him or her. One effective method for breaking the ice is called romancing the stone. Romancing the stone refers to relating interesting facts and folklore about the stone to make it more exciting or exotic to the customer. When you sell a gemstone, you're selling more than the stone itself. You're selling the benefits that the customer receives from both owning and wearing the stone, the mystery, the prestige, and the folklore that surrounds it. Determine your customer's wants and needs by asking effective questions and listening carefully to the answers. What is their top priority? Is the item a gift or is it for the customer? Listen carefully to your customers to determine their motives for buying. Then focus your sales presentation on their responses. And how will you respond to questions that you cannot answer? If you're not sure, don't guess. Acknowledge that you don't know the answer, then use your resources to find out. Customers don't expect you to have the answer to every question, but they do respect your willingness to go that extra mile to find the correct answers. Customers will often want to substitute gems and sharper image jewelry. This can only be done if a calibrated stone of the correct measurements is chosen. Make sure that the customer is serious about purchasing a custom piece before we take the time and expense to produce it. Involve a member of your management team in these instances. If a customer has a particular stone in mind, he can buy it loose and have it set by a jeweler in the design of his choice. Remind customers that the sharper image is not a jeweler. We are a gemstone distributor, offering quality stones at a very reasonable price. When is it time to close the sale? It's when you sense that the customer has enough information to make a decision. Look for buying signals, verbal and nonverbal clues. If the customer stops asking questions, nods in agreement, ask which credit cards we accept, or ask about the price, availability, or delivery, it is time to close the sale. Sometimes your customer will be close to making a decision and just needs to be reassured. This is the time to make your customer aware of our exclusive customer service policies. 30-day trial period, one-year quality guarantee, and frequent buyer's reward. Educate your customers about our gemstone appraisal rebate so they can be certain about our quality and prices. Once a customer has decided to buy and you've closed the sale, work to build an ongoing business relationship. Keep the customer's name and a record of his purchases in your client book so you can invite him to a future gym show. Call or write him a note to let him know when new pieces come in that complement the items he has already purchased. Ask if there are any special occasions coming up and make a note so you can call to remind him and suggest appropriate gifts. The best prospect is a customer who has purchased gems from you already, so it pays to follow up with your customers. Today's fashions find customers wearing faux jewelry to complement their gems. Faux jewelry has become an increasingly exciting addition to our wide array of gemstone products. By following some basic security measures, you can reduce shoplifting losses. Lock the display cases each time you remove or replace a gem and keep your keys with you at all times. Remove only one or two gems or jewelry pieces from the case at a time and never turn your back or step away from a customer you are showing gems to. When you sell an item from the jewelry case, let a member of your management team know so they can fill in the empty space with merchandise from the safe. If anyone or anything looks suspicious to you, alert management right away. The key to preventing shoplifting is to be cautious and aware of your surroundings. Product knowledge, professionalism, selling skills, and security consciousness are the keys to your success and maximizing your gemstone sales. We're in Little Rock to help you increase your gemstone sales. So if you need some help, don't be bashful. Call us in Little Rock. You'll be amazed once you get your sales and your knowledge going how much you're going to help yourself to better sales. Good luck.